I'm very happy to be here with you today. Uh, in this presentation, I will share with you some of my research and development work related uh, to the use of technology in schools, specifically uh, the important but often misunderstood role prototyping plays in finding ways of using technology to address substantive teaching and learning problems. My exploration of the use of technology in education began innocently enough with the discovery of a stack of broken Apple IIe computers in the back closet of my first classroom. After I repaired them one by one after school, I set about figuring out what use they could be uh, in my teaching. This exploration continues to this day. The basic issue is how uh, to put the use, the horse, ahead of the technology, the cart. All too often we have technology thrust upon us, iPads, smart, pads, smart boards, Apple IIe's, and then we need to figure out ways of using them. Even, even the dom dominant frameworks of classifying use subtly promote technology's tug the Ontario Ministry uh, supports Puente, Puente Dura's uh, SAMR model with technology redefining use at the top level and Joan Hughes' RAP framework transforms instruction seen here at the bottom, both suggesting that technology makes possible new forms of teaching and learning previously inconceivable without the new technology. My exploration took hold during my time at the Institute of Child Study Lab School, a school related to John Dewey's lab school, which he contended was a place that shows what's possible in education. But as context for developing transferable approaches, these reified schools often were too far and distant from real classrooms. The concern about the context of use was reinforced in Mr. and Collier's reworking of their now classic technological pedagogical content knowledge framework, a class of knowledge they contend is important to teachers' use of technology. Here notice that they have put context uh, indicating that context matters to use. In addition to a concern about context, my colleague Vanessa Spiel and I uh, have found that how one engages in the development of new technologies and new ways of using technologies has an effect on the outcome. We found that many of our learning sciences colleagues engaged in some form of designing that, as the cover suggests, wasn't necessarily linear. Many use the Stanford D School's design thinking model as a starting point, but we found that it was deconstructed often and engaged in, in not a linear process, but uh, was separated. <laughs> Key insights uh, were that empathy and empathizing and rapid low, low resolution prototyping was at play. Researchers Doris and uh, Cross have represented this as movement between problem space and solution space. The key being that if one oscillates between these spaces through rapid prototyping and empathetic listening, that even better problems reveal themselves. I will share a few examples of my own work in this area. The type of research I do is called design research, which involves the production of case design cases. I encourage you to look at the International Journal of Designs for Learning uh, to learn more. Briefly, these are thickly described case studies that communicate the entirety of the design work, leaving the reader to determine the value of the, on their own context. Now I'd like to just share a bit about my research and development work related to classrooms as knowledge building communities, where they are centered not on tasks and activities, but instead on student ideas. Technology in the form of a collaborative whiteboard has been produced uh, and developed to support classroom discourse about these ideas. The system also supports documentation by the researcher and teacher here in a hidden space. Following design research's emphasis on phases, the case study uh, was done uh, in three phases with the local teacher. In the final phase, we found several design successes and failures, all of which were described in the written write-up of the case. A newspaper strategy to inform students about new ideas wasn't successful, but increased reading and experimenting did improve engagement with core ideas. The issue of students' indifference to other students' ideas was addressed by seating uh, circle talks with contrasting ideas and by creating new spaces for discussion. At the faculty, I have been exploring how designing can be engaged in by our B.Ed. students. With the pandemic, our students haven't been able to use our physical tools. Happily, Actua and Queen's Connections donated and distributed uh, one microbit to, to each of our 400 candidates. Microbits are small programmable microprocessors. These include an accelerometer, <laughs> Uh, 
and my behind. Uh, these include an accelerometer, compass, and other onboard tools and can be uh, programmed with simple block coding. Uh, my educational technology concentration students have started in-reach projects uh, uh, to look at how these can be used uh, with various. Uh, so far, we have worked with three instructors, Stefan Merchant, uh, ben Bolden and Shelley Mulrooney. Uh, in each case, the students interviewed the instructor to emphasize with them in terms of empathize with them in terms of developing a problem. Shelley's problem involved connecting heart health to exercise. The resulting solution had the microbit coded uh, to serve as both a count, step counter and a pulse monitor. Most interestingly, when Shelley saw the prototype, uh, she conveyed that she uh, what was really needed was a way of motivating students to be more active, uh, to be more active. In terms of the physics design group, uh, they came away from their interview with the problem being of speeding up the iterative process of science. They looked at ways uh, that the students could explore gravity using a pendulum and went through three prototypes before finding one that worked. Stefan wondered if the development work could be part of the problem. Finally, Ben uh, Bolden gave music group an impassioned plea that what is needed is a way to support students in their musicality. The designers used the accelerometer to measure the angle of an instrument uh, and to program it to be able to uh, determine if the instrument is being held at the right angle. In each of the cases, designing was led by a concern for finding the best problem that could be addressed. Even when, given the technology, we stepped back and asked, what is hard to learn, what is hard to teach, and therefore is worth the investment in time and energy in solving uh, with technology. And throughout, prototyping was used to inform the problem as well as the solution.